I'm Zach. I'm Tiff. And together with our dogs Tuco and Frankie, we live in a school bus that we converted ourselves. Um, around five years ago, we saw this couple on YouTube that were living in an RV full time and they were traveling around the US going where they wanted, whenever they wanted. And when we saw that, it blew our minds. Uh, we saw that it was possible that someone around our age could make that happen. And so we knew from that point on that that's what we wanted for ourselves and we were willing to make some sacrifices and really kind of do whatever it took to make that happen our because of them our original goal was to get an rv and mm -hmm. we started shopping for rvs we toured them it was a lot of fun to think of the possibilities but the price tags on them uh they're high they just weren't they weren't in our price range and we were okay with that we knew that this might be something that took a while. So in the meantime, we started taking steps to take our careers, where, where we both work nine to five or nine to six, really, <laughs> um, office jobs, take those careers and try to transition them into jobs that we could take on the road. Yeah, and over the course of a few years, making those choices and doing those things, we came across uh, this group of people that were converting school buses, of all things, into tiny houses. And uh, they were doing it because it was so ex inexpensive to pick up a school bus uh, from an auction. It was like $2,500 compared to a guaranteed at least sixty grand for an RV. And with a school bus, you can you know, once you rip the seats out, you can do whatever you want to the interior. Whatever is important to you, you can put in. Sort of the sky's the limit. And uh, even though we didn't have any knowledge, we said this is how we this is how we achieve this dream. Yeah, we were so excited because all of a sudden this goal that we thought might be ten years out was suddenly within reach. So mm -hmm. we started feverishly hunting for school buses. Yeah, we looked on Craigslist. We looked on eBay, and we finally found one that was in good shape from a local school district at auction. And then we started a, a very long, a very difficult two-year journey converting what you see behind you. Yeah, and we did our best to document the entire process along the way. Um, we had no knowledge. We had no idea how to do any kind of woodworking or construction, electrical plumbing. <laughs> um, but we learned along the way. And uh, because we had so much inspiration from other YouTube videos, basically that's how we learned how to do all of this. Everything. We're students of YouTube University for <laughs> sure. And uh, so because of that, we wanted to give back to the community for people that were thinking of doing the same thing or inspired by other people doing that. We wanted to uh, provide some content on our side. And so that's what we've done so far. And, and as of uh, September of 2018, we've been living full time in this behemoth. Um, and it's great because it allows us to do what we want to do. We've achieved that dream because we're able to go into a really amazing location and go hiking and uh, take images and be where we want to be for essentially as long as we want to be there. And uh, it's, it's really been pretty phenomenal. It's not always easy by a long shot. <laughs> and that's kind of what we want to convey in our videos that we're continuing to make. We release like one video a week or something. Uh, and it's about this lifestyle. It's about the issues that we run into. Uh, it's about how we're able to keep this going and about uh, also the cool places we get to experience. Mm -hmm. um, and it's it's been really, really cool so far. We're really excited to show you the tour of the bus. It's far from perfect, but it works for our needs and it allows us to do, I mean, exactly what we've always wanted to do. So yeah. we're excited to show it to you. <laughs> if you watch the video and you like it, please put a thumbs up on it. Subscribe if you want to see more of the videos he was mm -hmm. talking about. You can hit an alert bell if you want to get notifications when we yeah. upload new videos. We hope you like it. We hope you like the tour. Uh, so without further ado, we hope you guys enjoy. Check it out. Diane Arbus, named after the American photographer Diane Arbus, is a 1998 front-engine, flat-nose, Amtran Genesis school bus, which we bought from the Cherry Creek School District in Denver, Colorado for $2,500. She is 32 feet long, 10 feet 2 inches tall, and weighs 20,380 pounds. Tiffany painted the outside of the bus with two nature scenes, one day and one night. Behind the hood, she's powered by a mechanical DT-466, coupled to an Allison MT-643 transmission. We consistently get between 9 and 10 miles per gallon. On the inside, she's been completely gutted and remodeled. We both love cabins, so we modeled the interior with that in mind. Our ceiling is tongue-and-groove pine, 
Our floor is a Brazilian red cherry, which we picked up as leftovers from another tiny house build. Before you even step inside, you can find areas we've modified for better storage. Clips on the right hold a broom, umbrella, and a tripod. On the left is our key rack and containers for odds and ends. Stepping into the bus, you'll see the driver's area sectioned off by the engine cover. Aside from some nice pockets, the driver's area is fairly spartan, with the nicest amenity being the beaded seat cover. We've decorated the bulkhead above the driver's seat with an 11 by 14 contact print, a few knickknacks, and Lilo, our hula dancer. Behind the cockpit is our entertainment center, storage, thingy. In here, we keep board games, video games, tools, our electric heater, and useful junk. This is also where we have our bookshelf. Below the entertainment center are our two ottomans. They can be used for sitting, as well as storing. They're particularly useful when sitting on the couch. The couch serves several purposes. It can be a lounge area or a work area, but it's mostly used for the dogs. We have storage under the couch for tools, off-season clothing, and a few other things. Behind the couch is one of my favorite parts of the bus, our cubic mini wood-burning stove. It keeps us warm on the coldest of nights and is just charming. We overbuilt the hearth around it and finished it with beer cans from one of our favorite breweries. Behind the hearth we have some mason jars, storage, and even more storage under the hearth. Across from the hearth is a special cabinet to house Tiffany's printer. A large part of her business relies on shipped printed orders, so she built a custom cabinet to accommodate her printer as well as her shipping supplies. Speaking of work, this leads us to our desk, and really the centerpiece of the main cabin. We needed this area to be comfortable enough to serve multiple uses, which is really the name of the game of everything in the bus. We needed to be able to sit here for extended periods. This is where we would design, record, edit, shoot, prepare food, eat, relax, watch TV, talk, argue, make up, play games. You get the idea. Our solution is a long desk of live edge elm we recovered from a shop specializing in schedule fell trees. The desk is just deep enough to allow for enough room to move in the walkway and long enough to hold computers, hard drives, and other gadgets. We love this thing. Having a multi-purpose desk like this was important, but we also wanted to sit across from each other to eat or play games. We realized we could have the best of both worlds, so we installed a fold-out dinette. This allows us to work and have our gadgets out on the desk, and then swing around for a meal without having to stop a project and clean up. The fold-out dinette also provides yet another space for storage. On my side of the desk, you'll see a raised platform of Live Edge Russian Olive from the same schedule felt lumberyard. I'm acutely aware of how much I sit throughout the day while I work, and yes, we do work, so I wanted to make sure we had the option of using a standing desk. You might have noticed our roll-up curtains. Tiffany made these with her sister Ashley. They're double-sided with a felt wool blend and plaid fabric. They do a great job of blocking out light inside and out. They're held up by these repurposed leather belts. Charming. On either side of the bus, we have custom-built storage boxes. Each of these can be tilted or removed entirely to get what's inside. We keep lots of things in these boxes, from extra cables all the way to coffee beans. That brings us to the kitchen. Our friend Kenny built this amazing countertop for us and also made us this cutting board. We're in love with it. Originally, this negative space was meant to house the cutting board, but we felt it would be better used as a hot, safe surface so that we could put down pots and pans without damaging the wood. For cooking, we elected to go sans oven and instead just use an alcohol-burning stovetop. It's quaint, attractive, functional, and burns clean enough for Hank Hill. One of our fears when designing the bus was that our sink might be too small, so we went oversized. Our utility sink doubles as both a place to do dishes as well as holds our plants when we're underway. The faucet also fits in nicely with the rest of the aesthetic. Behind the sink we have a recess for our knives which are held magnetically. It can also hold a bottle of wine. Our two bottle openers are constantly yelling at each other. Below the sink we have storage for cleaning supplies, pots and pans, a composting bin, our coffee grinder, trash bags, and a few other things. We have drawers for utensils, spices, plates, trash and recycling, and we also have a pantry. 
Our refrigerator is a Dometic 50 quart that we've placed on a furniture dolly for easy access. It's energy efficient and powered off of our 12 volt power supply. Speaking of power, our house is completely off grid with a modest yet fully functional battery and solar system. We have three Goal Zero battery units with our own dedicated uses. Our Yeti 1400 powers our fridge and our laptops. Our Yeti 400 powers the ceiling fan and water pump. And our Yeti 150 charges our lights and phones in the bedroom. It might seem redundant, but redundancy is good. If one fails, another unit can help carry the load, at least for a while. They're charged by a total of 450 watts of solar on the roof and another 300 watts of auxiliary solar, which we'll talk about later. The closet separates the main cabin from the bedroom. It's more function than form, so we put in a curtain to cover it when we don't need it. Across from the closet is the bathroom. This was all Tiffany. She tiled the floor, found and refinished the medicine cabinet, built the counter, installed the shelves, installed the stained glass privacy covers, and really just killed it. We use a nature's head composting toilet, and let me tell you, it truly doesn't smell. Like, at all. We've yet to use our shower, which we built out of a stock tub. It's good to know it's there, and I'm sure we'll be thankful for it when it comes to be summertime. But until then, it's a good place for storage. And that brings us to the bedroom. Like most everything in the bus, we needed the bedroom to serve multiple functions. Of course, it had to be comfortable enough to sleep on, so we got a foam mattress with a cooling pad for those warm nights. We also wanted to be able to spend time here during the day and work if we wanted to, so we made sure we could lean against the wall. Overhead, we put a map so we could lay back and think about where we wanted to head next, as well as mark the places we've already been. The bulkhead serves as a bookshelf, a place to put some water, and since it's metal, we use magnets to put up some decoration. Around the edge of the bedroom, we put color-changing LEDs that really give the bedroom some atmosphere in the evening. Above the bed, strategically placed, is our max fan, which is probably one of the best decisions we've made in the bus overall. It's powerful and can push air in or out of the bus, even when it's raining. It's already been the difference between uncomfortably hot and pleasantly cool. Below the bed, we have storage, as well as our fresh water tanks and water pump. We have 63 gallons of fresh water and 66 gallons of gray water mounted underneath the bus. If we're careful, that can get us two weeks wild camping. Top side, we've installed a ladder, deck, and 450 watts of solar power. We've made the handicapped door a garage space where we keep all kinds of things, like more solar panels, our hot water heater, which we've yet to use, backpacks, and camping equipment. We've also installed a drawbridge table for more surface area when we're stationary. With the auxiliary solar panels, we have a total of 750 watts of solar. When we started converting, we didn't know anything about woodworking, electrical, plumbing, or construction. We learned. We made mistakes. We learned some more. We made more mistakes. And finally, we made it work. What resulted was our version of perfect imperfection. Lines aren't straight. Drawers are a bit stiff, particularly when it's humid. There are still holes in the dash. Not sure what's going on there. The devil loves our details, but so do we. It's ours. We made it. And the imperfections are evidence of that. But most importantly, it works. And we love it for that. We also love it because it allows us to do this.